Ah, crack. What's going on with my brake fluid reservoir? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to cover a rare unscheduled maintenance item for my car. Uh, I was doing my annual service uh, and I was going through the parts that often people will skip doing. I was inspecting all my brake lines and I was just getting ready basically to do my brake fluid flush. And I took a look at my, master, my brake fluid master cylinder, which is this plastic reservoir up here, and I noticed something didn't look right about it. And I had a closer look, and maybe we'll get the cameraman to come in here and see if uh, he can take a look with me. If you look in close, you might notice some cracking in the, on the corner of the, the reservoir. And then when I looked straight down for, at this side of it, there was all sorts of cracking running horizontally uh, across the reservoir. And I'll maybe light it from below to see if we can see it any better this way. And then I was like, well, wow, is my reservoir cracking? And then if we look on this very front lip, there's a little drip of fluid building up there. And I think my reservoir is cracked and weeping brake fluid. So this is a big deal. Uh, the number one safety system on your car is your brake system. If the brakes don't work right, people die. So um, I'm worried about this. My car is about 16 years old now, and it's got 50,000 miles on it. But I think what matters maybe most about this issue is I, my car is in uh, Northern California, but I'm in uh, Sacramento area where it's hot. So much of the year, my car is, you know, in 100 plus degree or close to 100 degree temperatures. So I don't know if that's it, but I'm kind of thinking that the plastic reservoir is starting to crack, um, either because of age or because of the temperature or probably both. The good news is, is this is something you could go out and check on your car right now. Walk outside with an inspection light, take a look down in the master cylinder area, and take a look and see if you have this cracking and crazing going on in your reservoir. If you do, well, I would probably do one of two things. If it's wet and weeping, I wouldn't drive my car until I replaced it. If it's just cracked, um, I would probably wait until my next annual service and check it then, but also maybe gear up to change the reservoir at that time because it's a logical time when you're going to do your brake fluid flush anyways. So here I am, I'm doing my annual service. I've discovered that mine's cracked. So I'm gonna show you how to change the brake fluid reservoir right now. This is part of your brake system. So if you are squeamish about working on your brakes, don't. Let somebody that's a professional do it. Take your car to them, show them this video. Um, you know, you, you definitely don't wanna mess around with something you aren't confident you can get done. We are going to potentially have to bleed the brakes, so if that's something you haven't done before, I do have videos up here linked up how to do that. Um, we're actually going to do it in a little bit of a weird way. I'm going to reverse bleed the brakes to kind of burp out any air that might happen when I change the reservoir, and I'll show you that trick during the video. Parts-wise, we need a new brake fluid reservoir. So uh, here's one that I've uh, tracked down. Um, and basically it's just basically a plastic housing and it includes uh, the brake fluid low level sensor switch. It does not include uh, the cap. Now, uh, the good news is this is not a bespoke Aston Martin part. Uh, in fact, it is a part number 03350884881. I went online and I looked at how much this reservoir cost. It was about 250 US dollars, plus it would have to be shipped and there'd be taxes on top of that. And I was like, man, uh, if this isn't bespoke, who, you know, where else could I maybe get it? So as it turns out, this is also a Jaguar part. It's not made by Jaguar, but you can find it in Jaguars of the same era. And in fact, if you went and looked up the 2005 Jaguar XJ8, XK8, XJR, or XKR, 
Um, basically, this is the same um, brake fluid reservoir that they use in their car. So you might be able to call your local JAG dealer and find it cheaper or in stock. Uh, you might be able to go online. I tried. I also tried to look and see if I could find this as a uh, generic aftermarket part, and I haven't been successful, but if you are, please leave a comment below so that I could share that information with others. So I was looking at buying this uh, online from an Aston parts supplier, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a look and see if I can find it someplace else. Ta-da! What I actually did is I went online and I searched the part number and I also searched for brake fluid reservoir Jaguar XK8 and lo and behold what I found was a whole brake uh, master cylinder and the fluid reservoir and the cap for sale on eBay from an auto wrecker in Texas uh, from a, a Jaguar they were braking. And that's the good news, right? That there are many more Jaguars on the road than Astons. So I paid a grand total of $72 US with shipping for this. Now you're thinking, ah, oh, but it's a used part for your brake system. This is a plastic cup. It sits on top the brake fluid, brake master cylinder. It is not under pressure. It is basically a cup that holds brake fluid. If it's the cup's in good shape, it's good to use. And the part number is identical. Uh, it's identical in every way. Um, I have compared them already. So this gave me a nice tool also that I can show you how to do the work here on the bench when it comes time. So you, uh, you can buy it new or you might be able to source it in great condition. Make sure it has no cracks. Make sure the sensor works. Um, and uh, you could utilize a uh, used one in your car. So now that I have the part on hand, let me show you the tools we're going to need to get the job done. Tool-wise, uh, the main stars are we need a 13 millimeter uh, six point, and I used a quarter inch drive. This is my thinnest wall uh, socket. We have some tight clearances, so you definitely want to use the smallest 13 millimeter you have. Uh, I also have a quarter inch drive T25 Torx bit. Uh, we're going to use that to get one of the bolts out. Um, in conjunction with these, I have a, an array of extensions. I used all of them, a three inch, a six inch, and a 12 inch, along with a quarter inch drive ratchet. I also have my bendy head half inch drive ratchet, which I combined with my half to quarter inch, or my, sorry, my three inch to quarter inch uh, adapter. Um, and that's gonna be handy when we're breaking a couple of the bolts loose. Um, I have my magnetic pickup tool. I'm gonna, you'll see me use this to uh, put on one of the nuts in a really difficult place. Not essential, but uh, will be helpful. Uh, my inspection light will be very essential. Uh, I have a quarter inch torque wrench. Because uh, we have one bolt, we have to do up to four Newton meters, so that's a very low torque. I have my 3 8 drive torque wrench, uh, because one of the bolts we have to do up is to 25 Newton meters. i am also got my uh, vacuum, my brake fluid vacuum extractor with the straw tip attached to it. I'm going to use this to suck out the old brake fluid from the uh, reservoir. And then we have a, a couple of other tools. I use just about every flat blade screwdriver in my toolbox. Uh, you'll see me use these to keep the brake pads uh, from popping back out while I'm reverse brake bleeding. Uh, watch the video to understand more about that. We're going to have to top up the brake fluid again. So I have my brake fluid funnel and a fresh bottle of RBF 600 Motul brake fluid. Um, and you can check out my other video up here on selecting the right brake fluid for your car. And then there's uh, some mess control. I have a, an array of shop towels and I have several sheets of my Pigmat absorbent uh, towel you're gonna see me use. Uh, you could probably substitute a whole buttload of um, uh, paper towels instead of these. So now that we know the tools, let's go put them to use. So before we hop in the wheel well and start trying to do this in a very tight space, I thought it'd be cool since I have this whole thing here, uh, the use part with the master cylinder, that I can show you how to do it where you can see really clearly what's gonna go on. So. Uh, basically, this plastic reservoir, uh, we're going to disconnect the electrical connection. And remember, we're going to be accessing it from the front. The little tab we're going to have to push is going to be on the back side. So that's going to be difficult. Um, the other thing we can notice while we're here is there's this little side spigot. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a manual transmission DB9, this is going to be hooked up to your clutch 
slave cylinder. So you may have some other things in the way that I won't be showing in this video. I'm jealous of you for having a manual, but here's your punishment. You'll have to figure that part out on your own. But that's what the side spigot is if you're playing along at home. Now the plastic reservoir is held to the master cylinder by one bolt. And this is a T25 Torx and it's only got a few threads. And all it is is a shaft that goes across to, uh, to pin this down. So that just comes out and now we all we have to do is pull up the plastic reservoir out of these two uh, gasketed sockets in the uh, master cylinder. So I found, so we can't do it this, we can't really rock it this way because there's these plastic tabs that stick down. So my exper experimenting here has been pushing up at the front and we can see it's actually opening up and when the, the front pops out first. Now when we're doing this on the car, that's when we're going to get a whole buttload of brake fluid. Uh, even though we're going to try to empty this thing in advance, will come dripping out and we're going to have to deal with that. And then uh, we can continue to try and pry it up. And then we can see that the back one, this one came out with the rubber gasket attached. Not a big deal because you can just pull that off afterwards. And that'll give us a chance to look at the top of the brake master cylinder. Uh, so basically that's just got a port. And then these two rubber grommets push in there. So we're going to want to not damage those rubber grommets in any way. We're going to want to reuse these. And uh, so they can just basically, we can leave those assembled. And now we can see how the bottom of the master cylinder, or the reservoir works. It's just basically two spigots. Uh, that push into the two rubber grommets. And there's a little lip uh, that's on each of them to keep it kind of pushed in and then uh, resist coming out. So that's pretty easy. And while we have this sideways, you can probably see these segmentations of the reservoir. These are internal baffles uh, for the brake fluid. So when you're cornering or braking or accelerating, the brake fluid isn't sloshing back and forth. And if we look, we can just see inside the baffle for this one and a little passageway that's there for it. And we can also see that the bottom of this is tapered downward. So where it sits in the car horizontal, when we can get in with to suck out the old brake fluid, we're only going to be able to reach into this front baffle space and maybe into this one, and there's gonna leave brake fluid sitting probably in this little area here. So when we pull this out, we're probably gonna have a, an ounce or two of brake fluid that's gonna spill uh, if we do it in the car. So that's gonna suck. All right, but we'll try and figure out how to deal with that. I'm kind of hopeful when you see my technique that we might be able to tip the reservoir system forward then maybe this fluid will flow to the front and we might be able to suck a little bit more of it out that way. All right, well now that you know the theory behind the game, let's go ahead and give it a try. So we're over here at the reservoir and let me orient you to some of the challenges we're gonna to have to deal with. Um, you can see, well here it is, okay, we can get pretty good ac access to it. And way down in here, if we stick the camera in and look down towards where the bolts and things might be, we can even see uh, that pin that we have to pull out to release the reservoir. Uh, so, hey, that's looking pretty promising already. Um, but I'd like to point out the level sensor. Notice where that is. And now come back here and look at the tank, the replacement. That's right here. Half the length of the reservoir is still behind the top of that sensor. And if we go back and look now, so we've got half the unit is actually stuck underneath this scuttle plate. And there's a hose here, uh, which on my car, the clip holding it uh, wasn't clipped in. I'll fix that when I put it back together. So, okay, I'll pull that up and that'll free up a little bit more space. And then uh, there's a little bit of a, a blanket here for heat shield. And if we dig the, if you see where my fingertip is tapping right now, 
That is a metal structural member uh, that's part of the scuttle plate. And this tank reservoir is right up against it. So remember from the bench explanation, we actually have to pull this reservoir up about half an inch. It ain't possible, at least as far as I'm, I'm aware. So we're gonna have to attack it a different way. And another thing to point out while we're here is here's our oil dipstick. And if we look down in here, there's only about maybe a half an inch, a finger's width gap uh, between the tube and the reservoir. So there's, if we pull this reservoir forward, we have to worry about bumping into this. And then of course, there's our electrical connector uh, for the level sensor way back here. And I can probably, if I was desperate, I could reach it right now, but that's really difficult to disconnect. So I'm gonna recommend we do this a different way. We are going to disconnect the master cylinder from the brake booster. And we're gonna take off two nuts and that's gonna let us pull the whole unit forward about three quarters of an inch, just till we bump into this tube. And then it's gonna allow it to drop a little bit, probably about an inch and maybe tip a little bit so we can suck the fluid out a little easier. So that's the magic to it. As I was getting prepared to do this job, of course I checked the official Aston Martin Technician's Workshop Manual, and their recommendation is you remove the entire master cylinder uh, with the reservoir, disconnect the brake lines from it, disconnect the pressure switch, disconnect the level sensor switch, take the whole thing out, put it on the bench. Um, and then put it all back together again and you're gonna to have to do a complete brake fluid bleed. Uh, I think I can do it without doing that. I'd prefer not to crack open the actual brake lines uh, to the master cylinder. So I'm gonna give it a go and we'll see if it works out. So the first step in the process is gonna to be to get rid of as much of the brake fluid as we can right now. Um, so I'm gonna use my vacuum extractor and that has this nice little nozzle and I'm actually going to try to slip it in between the, the first little separation in the baffles between the two compartments. So I'm down into this, this third chamber at the bottom. And all I have to do is crack the valve open. And it's extracting as much brake fluid as it can get. So you can see in the light here, I've got a pretty considerable amount of brake fluid uh, out of the car. Uh, next up, let's get underneath the car and take a look around. So to get to the bottom of the reservoir, essentially I've got uh, one corner of the car jacked up uh, and I have a video for that. Uh, taken off the road wheel, I have a video for that and I've removed the inner fender liner. Um, and I have a video for that. So now we can actually see uh, the bottom of the reservoir. It's right up here. Here's the brake master cylinder. So basically here's what we wanna work with. And if we look in here, you can just see the pin that we need to remove for the reservoir. And you can see the nut for the master cylinder that holds it to the brake booster. And on the opposite side of the reservoir right here is the other nut. So I'm gonna be removing these two 13 millimeter nuts, but to get to this first nut on this side, you actually have to remove the pin first. So that's where we're gonna start. And the reservoir isn't gonna pop off if you remember looking at the bench version of the process. Uh, it's held in there pretty firmly by the, uh, by the rubber gaskets. So this is, really low torque, it's only about four Newton meters, so that should come loose very easily. Pardon for blocking the camera view. There we go. So I've got the pin out. So now with that pin out of the way, we can get in there with our thin wall quarter inch socket drive set. And there's no way that that socket would have been able to get on there with the pin still there. So these are done up at least at the factory to 25 newton meters and 
that's a considerable bit of force. Um, all right, so uh, I used a couple of different tools to get that finally off. Now the technician's owner's manual said that was gonna be a nylock nut. It's not. It's just a regular 13 millimeter shallow uh, nut. So next up, we're gonna go after the back nut. That one's gonna be a little bit easier. All right, we've got that nut out. So now the master cylinder uh, is loosed where it should be able to pull back and away from uh, the brake uh, booster. So I'm just gonna start to wiggle it. So <laughs> I've wiggled it a little bit. It's come back a few millimeters and I thought it'd be worthwhile to point out. So these two hard lines for the brake lines actually come down here to a flexible steel braided uh, hose uh, before they connect to the uh, the traction control uh, modulating device. So there's gonna be a little bit of give in these and I'm gonna kind of count on that. And I'm just gonna pull this master cylinder forward enough, hopefully to come off the studs. All right, so we're off the studs. And now I'm probably pinned up, hitting up against the uh, oil dipstick tube. But now I'm also, I'm able to come down a little bit and that's the magic we're after. So let's head up to the top and see if we can now, we're four to you know, an inch or so and we're down about half an inch. So let's go see if we can uh, get that uh, brake fluid reservoir sensor connection off and uh, see if we can tip the reservoir to get any more brake fluid to lean to the front and suck out a little bit extra. So we're, we've got it loose now or uh, on top. So now I have better access to this uh, brake fluid reservoir sensor. Um, so I'm gonna reach in here. And with one, this finger, I'm squeezing the clamp. And with this finger, I'm pushing the sensor off the end. There we go. And if I can, I'll spin this around so you can see I was pushing on that little tab to do the release. And uh, now I'm just gonna set that kind of off in the distance there. So let's see if I can push the nose down, take the cap off here again. And I'm gonna get my super sucker and we'll get in there and see if we can slurp out just a little bit more of the fluid if I, since I can get a little bit of an angle on it now. So what I'm worried about is this last half inch of fluid that I can see lurking uh, down there. So when I pull this reservoir off the top of that master cylinder, that stuff's just gonna drain straight out. So we're gonna have to be prepared for that. Everything now is about mess control. There's, that's probably, you know, four ounces of brake fluid that's gonna come out. And I've got my pig mat, and you could just be using regular paper towel or rags, but I have it all the way over to sitting on top of the exhaust manifold engine's cold, of course. I've got a couple of folded over layers of pig mat on top of the wiring harnesses here. I'm also thinking it's gonna spill down onto these brake fluid pipe or the brake pipes. So I've got a rag kind of wrapped around those uh, to catch that if it starts coming this way. Uh, if you're a professional Aston mechanic, you're probably sitting there chuckling, ah, <laughs> this sucker isn't seriously gonna pull that off on the car. I've also got another layer of pig mat here folded twice. So I get four layers and this stuff's pretty amazing. It absorbs a lot. So I've got that nestled in there. So I have like eight layers of pig mat. So now um, I've got the reservoir and I'm just, remember our bench process, I'm gonna push up at the front and this is probably just gonna ultimately, once that front opens, it's gonna come down in a holy reign of terror there it goes. Uh, so I've got the separated. I'm starting to get some drool out. So now I have to separate the back one. I'm trying to find a way to get up there, but you can see some brake fluid is draining out. It's not too bad actually. 
and the rear gasket starting to lift out. There we go. The rear just released. Oh, and there's the rain. So I'm going to worry about catching the fluid here before, just to make sure it doesn't get away on me. Pigmat's doing its job. Okay, well, I think that is ready to lift out. So there's our baby. And we'll look at it again more closely on the bench, but I'm gonna do some mess control right now. So I've given it a pretty good hand clean. Uh, mostly, uh, I was just worried I wanted to absorb anything that was on the, the wiring harnesses. Uh, but uh, it really didn't take more than a minute or two of just cleaning up the dribbles that uh, came off the side of the reservoir. It's likely it'll still dribble a little bit, but uh, overall that wasn't too bad. So uh, let's go take a look at it from the top. So now we have an opportunity over here at the bench before I put the new one in just to compare them and you can really see the extent of all the cracking and crazing going on with this thing. Um, if I put a little light in it, maybe just have to bring it up. And uh, we also noticed now that we had it out, there's some weird things going on in the side, in the lower corners. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know what was really the issue with this thing, but there's crazing and cracking in the corners and obviously all this cracking along there uh, is really significant. Uh, so, when, you know, when you compare it to the, the replacement, uh, there's obviously this one's in a deteriorated condition. Um, but you can also, uh, while I've got it here, I can convince you they are absolutely identical in every respect. The part numbers uh, on the top match exactly. Uh, the orientation of the sensor is exactly the same. Um, the bottoms are exactly the same. So the, uh, the JAG part is for sure uh, the exact same one. The part number that matters is this one that's here and uh, that one lines up uh, exactly the same. So we're, we can also inspect from the top here just before we put the new one in. You can see we have little pools of the brake fluid sitting inside the grommet still which is terrific. You don't want to get any debris or cleaner into this so I'm actually not going to try and wipe this down at all. That is the brake fluid that will be getting used. So I'm going to try to bring my new cylinder in and just uh, plunk it down and squeeze it into those grommets uh, right where it sits. All right, so I'm going to see if I can just drop this in and at least get it sitting on top of those uh, spots. I'm probably going to have to do this, pull it, squeeze it in by pushing the master cylinder up on where the spigots, but let's see if I can just get this down in the hole. That wasn't too bad. Now I've got to see if I can, there we go. So I don't know if I'm right on top of them or not, but we can line them up better. Uh, there we go. So uh, let's just sort of see them there and uh, So with a little finagling there, uh, I think I've actually got them pretty well started. Um, but I want to get underneath the car and check that they're fully seated where I'm completely into those spigots um, or into the rubber grommet and make sure they're flush. And if they are, we'll get on to bleeding the brakes. So one last thing before we get under the car is I want to get the electrical connection done back up. Uh, because once I reconnect the this to the booster, this will be way back there and it'll be much harder to uh, get onto. So that's pretty easy, just pushes right back on. 
So we're okay, so we're back under the car and I'm looking up here at the gasket to the tank and I think I probably still got a millimeter or two to pull it back in. Um, so I'm just going to gently hook it over the uh, master cylinder bolts and then I'm going to just reach up and pull it down on both sides, kind of walking it back and forth, giving it a waggle. So the way you'll know you've got it down far enough is when you go to put the pin in, it'll go through easily and you should be able to hand start the threads. Uh, if you can't, then you might need to uh, tug it a little bit more and keep working it. But that seems to be starting. And like that, I can see it's going in. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Remember, I can't put this nut on with that bolt in place. But since I know the, it's doing up, I know I have the reservoir in, uh, down far enough. So I'm going to pull this back out. Yeah. So now I want to get the master cylinder sitting back fl flush against the brake booster. There's actually an, there is a step gasket in there, an old rubber gasket, so it might take a little finagling. This one gave me a little bit of grief when I was doing it in the dry run. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got, I'm up flush against the brake booster now. There's no gap. Do not start putting your bolts on if there is a gap. You're not fully seated. So once you've got it all the way back against the brake booster, we can get the two 13 millimeter nuts and reinstall them loosely. So to get this one in, it's kind of tough to get the thread started because there's limited access. So I'm going to use my magnetic pickup tool. I'm just going to use it to hold the end of the bolt nut. And I just need to get the first half turn Just like that. I don't know what it's like to work in your car when you don't have to stay out of the way of the camera. Okay, with them loosely uh, done up now, I'm going to switch to using a torque wrench. Now these get torqued to 25 Newton meters. Uh, and you don't want to screw around with this. Take the time is your brakes, go get an actual torque wrench and uh, do this properly. All right, so that's the master um, brake master cylinder reconnected to the brake booster. So now I'm going to get that pin in uh, that holds the plastic reservoir in place. So it's going in really easily, which is a good sign. It means everything's lined up perfectly. Okay, now this is definitely one not to over tighten. They have a torque spec for this. So I have my quarter inch torque wrench set for four Newton meters. And that's it, not very tight. So that pretty much wraps up the work from underneath. Uh, we're reattached firmly to the master cylinder. We've got our uh, retaining pin in there to hold the reservoir on. I'm just going to give it a last wipe up as best I can uh, to make sure that there's uh, no drips or brake fluid that's going to make me think that I have some other leak coming. And uh, let's go back up to the top. So with the reservoir all mounted up now again from below, we're back up top. So here's why, where I want to explain reverse brake bleeding. So right, we had those two grommets sitting there with little pools of brake fluid, and now we have the big air pocket of the empty reservoir above it. Well, we still don't have actually any air in our brake system. The reservoir is just completely empty. But I'm a little leery about just pouring some fresh brake fluid in on top, thinking there might be a few surface bubbles. So I'm gonna reverse bleed the brakes. I'm gonna squeeze the brake calipers at each wheel back out, and that's going to force brake fluid backwards through the system and it's going to cause the master uh, flu brake fluid reservoir here to fill back up with some of the existing brake fluid in the system and that's going to push any air that might be in the system upward with it and what so i've left this completely empty right now and what i'm hoping is by the time i 
uh, pushed back uh, the brake pads at each caliper, we're actually gonna see some uh, signs of uh, brake fluid, but you can see right now, uh, we're completely empty in there. There's no fluid sitting in the bottom. So uh, I'm gonna leave the cap off, and now I'm gonna go to each uh, corner, and I'm gonna force the brake pads back into the calipers very gently with a large screwdriver. So check this out in time-lapse. So by going to the trouble to squeeze the brake uh, pads back towards the calipers at all four corners, you can see now at the bottom, maybe a centimeter below the minimum, I now have a brake fluid level. So all that brake fluid that was displaced by the pistons has come back to the master uh, cylinder fluid reservoir. So this is terrific. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and top off uh, up to maximum uh, the reservoir. So now we're going to top uh, the fluid level up to maximum uh, using some fresh Motul RBF 600. Uh, all right. Don't worry if you go a little bit above maximum because you're not definitely not done um, as we, and I'm going to put the cap back on because now we're going to hop in the car and we're going to slowly depress the brake pedal because I want to get those brake pads back against the calipers and refill you know, all those void spaces uh, that we formed earlier. So I've hopped into the car, but cameraman Rob's gonna try to capture the moment when I start to press the brake pedal to uh, get the brake pad seated back up to the uh, rotors. So when you press on the brake pedal the first few times, it's gonna feel like there's no brakes at all because there is no resistance. So do, you don't need to start the car for this. You just wanna use a gentle pressure and that went right down to the floor. Let the pedal come up slowly on its own. Second press, still no resistance. Let it go, come back up again. Third press, because remember we've, we've pulled back all the, uh, the brake pads from all the rotors, so it's gonna take a few strokes to get back to where we actually have some pressure. And there we go, on my ninth pedal stroke, I have an absolutely rock solid brake pedal now. And uh, at the uh, caliper, hopefully we've got a little footage of um, uh, the brake pads coming back in contact with the rotor. So let's hop back out of the car and check the fluid level again. So this should be a fair ways down. And we're somewhere, because the fluid's so clean, uh, we're kind of uh, halfway between uh, min and max, I think. So now I'm going to top it up. And now we can see that I'm up to the max level and we're in good shape. So let's go ahead and uh, snugly reinstall the brake, brake fluid reservoir cap and job done. Well, changing this thing wasn't particularly trivial, but it wasn't all that difficult either. It just required some basic tools. Um, like I said, if you feel comfortable to work on your own brakes, I think it's no difficult than working with your brake caliper. So, so I think you should get back out into the garage right after you've watched this video. Double check to see if your reservoir's got all this cracking like mine did. Uh, if it's weeping like mine was, I think you should get it changed right away. If it's not weeping yet, I would probably, if it was me, wait till my next annual service when I'm already gonna have the wheels off and um, I'm gonna have a lot of the preamble work done um, and just do it then when I'm about to bleed the brakes on my car. Um, but other than that, you know, that's a, another job that you can take care of your, on your own. Princess Pedals hasn't thrown too many curveballs at me, uh, but this was an unscheduled maintenance event. First one, I think, in three or four years. So if this is the worst you can do, please don't do anything worse. Um, that's not too bad. So uh, down here, you're gonna find the companion blog article where I'll have links 
to the right part numbers, maybe the alternative if I can figure out um, an aftermarket replacement reservoir. Uh, up here, you're gonna probably find my video on how to bleed the brakes. Um, down here, if you like videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll get automatically notified when I release a new one. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Let me know how this project went for you. And maybe if you've got yours that's cracked and I can start to update the article, leave those comments down below. Thanks for watching.